Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us once again and welcome back. This is our 14th webinar on UE Corporate Tax. And we are discussing today interest capping rules. As usual, first of all, we'll go through whatever we have discussed till now, then we'll start this session as well. So whatever we have discussed till now, we have discussed overview of uh, corporate tax law, we have discussed resident and non-resident taxable persons, we have discussed exempt persons, we have discussed out of scope persons, we have discussed UE sourced income, we have discussed permanent establishment and the history of the permanent establishment, we have discussed corporate tax registrations, application of corporate tax on the partnership, application of corporate tax on the free zones, application of corporate tax on family foundations and trust, how to compute the taxable income. In our 12th webinar, we have discussed unrealized gain and losses on assets on liabilities. In our last webinar, we have discussed deductible expenses. We established which are the expenses that we can claim and which are the expenses that we can not claim. This is whatever we have discussed till now. Our uh, today's session, as I discussed earlier, we are discussing today interest capping rules. We will try to establish that what is the reasons of introducing interest capping rules. Then what are the interest capping rules, exempt persons, the person which are not exempt from the interest capping rules. There's some sort of threshold it has been mentioned in the law as well. We'll see wherever the threshold is being crossed, where what are the general rules and what are the special rules for the interest claiming in while calculating the taxable profits. So let's start the discussion. Let me share the screen. So these are the previous lectures that we've discussed, 13 lectures that we've discussed till now. This is the 14th lecture, 14th webinar on the interest capping rules. These are the contents that we will cover in our current webinar. We'll see interest capping rules, reasons of introducing interest capping rules. First of all, we'll look into the reasons. Then we'll see interest capping rules. The some persons which are exempt from the interest capping rules and some are non-exempt. Rest all are non-exempt from the interest capping rules. Sorry. It doesn't mention in the law that the minister can set up the threshold. If your interest net interest amount is below the threshold, then you can claim 100% interest amount. And if your net interest amount is above threshold, there are general rules, there are special rules as well that we'll discuss in detail. So first of all, I would like to say there are different source of financing for the businesses. This is the equity source of finance, regular debt, preference shares and overdraft. Equity is always carrying two risks. One is a financial risk, one is a business risk. Equity holders are subject to two risks. One is a business risk and second is a financial risk. We'll have sometimes separate sessions on this. What are the financial risks? What are the business risks? I am planning to have, have sessions on the strategic financial management as well. Once we'll be discussing strategic financial management, then we'll discuss what are the business risks, what are the financial risks. For the time being, we can say equity holders are subject to two risks. One is a business risk and one is a financial risk. Regular debt, preference, share overdraft, all these shareholders, all these basically debt providers, lenders, they are subject to financial risk, financial risk and financial risk. We all know the general principle, higher will be the risk, higher will be the return. Here risk is higher because two risk here, single risk, single risk and single risk. So this shows the cost of equity, it always be higher than the cost of the debt because debt holders are subject to one risk and equity holders are subject to two risks. When the cost of debt is lower than the cost of the equity, what the businesses will try, businesses will try to have the 
lesser cost option of financing mean the business will try to have the maximum debt in their share capital might be they will forget the optimum capital structure as well so businesses can have the maximum debt businesses can have the maximum finance without considering the optimum capital structure so the cost of borrowing of the debt commonly referred to as the interest is typically lower than the cost of the equity they to approve because the risk is lower so cost will be lower as well so the business would like to have maximum debt in their capital structure to have the minimum cost of capital and corporate tax is levied we know this in the taxable profits so while calculating adjusting accounting profits interest expenses payments can reduce the taxable profits so higher will be the higher will be the debt higher will be the interest and less with the taxable profits so the, the objective is basically businesses can have the maximum debt without considering the optimum capital structure debt will be higher interest will be higher so debt will be higher interest will be higher taxable profit will be lower one taxable profit will be lower and then tax will be lower as well so to cater this thing the businesses should not have the maximum debt unless and until they have genuine requirement they are considering the capital structure tax capping rules have been introduced in the ue corporate tax law what they said to discourage excessive debt financing ensure that the debt financing use or arising as a result of certain specific intra-group transaction will only be deductible if there is a valid commercial reason for obtaining the loan and to counter profit shifting practices interest capping rules have been introduced in the ue corporate tax law under the article 30. so we all are clear what is the reasons of introducing interest capping rules I just wanted to give you an example. There's a one company. One company is in a free zone. This is the free zone. This company is in the free zone. One another company is on the mainland. Both are related parties. We all know this. We have already discussed so many times that the free zone company can have an income which can be subject to tax at 0% some income. If the income is not subject to qualifying income, then it will be subject to tax at 9%. For the time being, we are assuming that the income of the free zone company is 0%. So what this mainland company can do, mainland company can ask the free zone company for a debt. So assuming they are taking a debt of 100,000 and they are putting interest 15% assuming for the time being. So 15,000, it will be interest amount. This interest amount, it will be booked as an expense on the mainland company. Once it will be booked as an expense on the mainland company, it will reduce the taxable profits of the mainland company. It will reduce taxable profits on the mainland company. This 15,000 as an interest will be transferred to the free zone company. As we discuss and we take an assumption that the income of the free zone company for the time being, we are assuming that it will not be subject to tax. So once this 15,000 will be transferred from the mainland company to the free zone company in the form of interest, this 15,000 will not be subject to corporate tax in the free zone company. But the mainland company will claim can claim as 15,000 as an interest expense, which will reduce its taxable profits. So the companies, group companies can go and they can have some sort of planning where they can shift, they can reduce their taxable profits. Might be the market rate is 5%. They are taking a loan of more than 5%, 15%, 20%, whatever they are agreeing in between. And at the same time, they can transfer the profit. So this is the reason that interest capping rules has been introduced and transfer pricing regulations has been introduced as well. Because while setting the interest rate, they need to consider what is the market interest rate. So this is the reason that interest capping rules as well as transfer pricing regulations has been introduced in the UE corporate tax law. So I have mentioned the same example here, a company on the mainland of United Arab Emirates can take a massive loan from a related party in the free zone whose income attracts 0% tax. We have assumed it for the time being. The interest income in the hands of free zone company will be subject to tax at 0% equal interest expense in the mainland company's books will reduce the mainland company taxable profits. Currently, consequently, the interest on debt facilitates the transfer of profit from a high tax jurisdiction mainland, which is 9% to a 0% tax jurisdiction 
which is a free zone. There is a possibility if they are structuring the loan like this in between the related parties, so profit can be shifted from the mainland company to the free zone company, which is subject to tax. We assume that for the time being, it will be 0%. So this is the reason that interest capping rules have been introduced. So what is the interest as defined in the UAE corporate tax law? Any amount accrued or paid, either you are paying, either you are accruing, in both of the cases, law says it will be interest for the use of money or credit, including discounts, premium, profit paid, or amounts incurred in connection with the raising of finance. Usually we will say this is a loan processing fee. The important things are two words are very important here. One is they accrued or paid. Even the interest has been accrued, even the interest has been paid, it will be considered an interest. Second, one is the for the use of the money. Second is to raise the money incurred in connection with the raising of the finance. Either you are getting the money for using, either you so incurring the money for using or you incurring the cost for the raising of the finance. In both of the cases, it will be considered an, an interest. Then they said net interest expenditure. Net interest is interest in interest expense, less interest income. So net interest. Interest capping rules are applicable on the net interest. So we need to net it out. What is income? What is interest income, what is interest expense, then we need to apply the interest capping rules. So we know the interest, we know the reason of implementations of interest capping rules, we know the net interest. So any amount income to raise the finances has also be considered as interest as we discussed. So these are the general interest capping rules. What law says, law says 30% of earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization will be allowed during the current tax period. And any amount beyond 30% of EBITDA can be carried forward for further 10 tax years. So net interest and bit expenditure, we have already discussed what is net interest expenditure, 30% of EBITDA and then 30% of EBITDA is allowed, remaining will be carried forward for further period of 10 years. So net interest expenditure, we have already discussed this is interest expense, less interest income on net basis, 30% of EBITDA. EBITDA, this one thing is very important, the law is using the word adjusted EBITDA. So when the law is using the word adjusted EBITDA, the main adjustment will be exempt income. Because when we will calculate the accounting profits, we will take the exempt income as a part of the accounting revenue law says we should not consider exempt income while calculating the EBITDA. So it needs to be adjusted. So any interest or any income related to exempt income, it needs to be adjusted as well. So two things are very important. While calculating net interest, we should not consider any interest expense or any interest income related to exempt income. Second thing, while calculating EBITDA, we should not consider any in exempt income. So ex EBITDA as well as net interest, the impact direct or indirect impact of exempt income will not be part of both these two elements. Then they say the amount of net expenditure disallowed, it can be carried forward for further period of 10 tax period. We have already discussed this. There is a one exception to this law. This is exception is the limitation. Minister can set up the limitation. If the interest amount is below the limitation, the businesses can claim 100% interest. And we need to wait for the decision from the minister. What is the threshold? If the interest net interest amount is below threshold, businesses will be able to claim 100% interest. If this is beyond that threshold, then interest capping rules will be applicable. And for this exception, for this limitation, for this threshold, we need to wait for the minister's decision. What is the total amount? What is the threshold for the net interest? Moreover, they said any interest which is not allowed in any other provision of the law, it will not be considered here as well. So these are the generic interest capping rules. Interest capping rules we decided, we discussed 30% of EBITDA, we can claim it. Then this EBITDA and this net interest will not be carrying any impact or any direct and indirect impact related to the exempt income. Remaining can be carried forward for the period of 10 tax year. 
And if the amount is below the threshold specified, the investor will be able to claim 100% interest as an expense. But the, there are some exceptions to this general principle as well. These are basically exceptions, meaning these interest capping rules are not applicable on the bank. These interest capping rules are not applicable on the insurance provider. These, applicable, these are not applicable on the natural person undertaking of business or business activity in the state. And these are not applicable on any other person as may be determined by the minister. These four categories. So these are the taxable persons. These four taxable persons will not be applicable. Sorry, interest capping rules will not be applicable on these four taxable persons. So we can set a classification here. So one other taxable person, these are the exempt taxable person, exempt from interest capping rule. These taxable persons are exempt from the interest capping rules. Rest of the taxable persons are subject to tax on the interest capping rules. Then these taxable persons which are subject to tax of the interest capping rule, there is a category, might be their net interest is below threshold or above threshold. If their net interest is below threshold, they will be able to claim 100% net interest while calculating the taxable profit. And if their net interest amount is beyond the threshold specified by the minister, then these interest capping rule will be applicable. How can we calculate the allowable interest amount? The simple principle is taxable, taxable person are required to calculate their accounting profit as per the applicable IFRS. We know this that the international financial standards are applicable in UAE. So businesses, a taxable person will be liable to calculate their accounting profit as per IFRS. Then they need to adjust their accounting profit and the main adjustment as we discussed, it will be exempt income. While calculating the accounting profit, exempt income will be added. Then we need, then we need to deduct this exempt income from the accounting profit to arrive at the EBITDA. So we need to adjust the EBITDA. We need to make adjustment to, in the accounting profit to arrive at the EBITDA. This adjustment can be of various types. We have already discussed in detail. And the major adjustment in this lecture that we have just discussed, it will be exempt income. After arriving at EBITDA, then we need to calculate the net interest. If this is a current period, net interest will be net interest will be interest expense less interest income. This will be net interest. But if this we are in the second period or we are in the third period, so we need to first of all consider net interest for the current year. For the current year, then we need to add carry forward net interest as well. We've already discussed the interest can be carried forward for further period of 10 tax period. So net interest for the previous year, it will be added. So both will become my net interest. So this net interest, now we know EBITDA, we know net interest, we need to calculate 30% of EBITDA. It will give me, assuming this EBITDA is 100 and I am calculating 30% of EBITDA, 30 is the interest amount that I can, claim while calculating the taxable profit of the current period. So then my, I need to go and need to check how much is my interest amount. Interest amount is below 30, I will claim 100%. And if interest amount is below threshold, I will claim 100%. If this interest amount is above the threshold and above 30% of EBITDA, sorry, yeah, if this amount is uh, above 30% of EBITDA and above the threshold, then we need to apply the general interest capping rules and reverse whatever will be the remaining amount, it will be carried forward. So 30 will be claimed in this tax period. So again, I'm repeating, I need to calculate EBITDA after I need to multiply the EBITDA with 30% and 30%, I'm assuming this is the 30. 30, I can claim maximum 30, we can claim in this tax period. Now we need to decide, my net interest expenditures are below 30, I will claim 100%. My net interest expenditures are below the threshold specified by the minister, then I will claim 100%. If this 30 is above, if sorry, if my net interest is above 30, then I will claim 30 in this tax period and remaining will be carried forward for further period of 10 years. These are the specific interest deduction rules. We have already discussed basically, we said 
their general interest deduction rules in the very beginning in the content then we we'll discuss there are special interest capping rules as well so article 30 deals with the general interest capping rules and article 31 deals with the specific interest deduction limitation rules so as per the article 31 they said no deduction shall be allowed or interest expenditure incurred on a loan obtained directly or indirectly from a related party in respect of any of the following transactions. First of all, this article 31 deals with the loan from the related party. Might be you are getting loan from the related party directly, might be you are getting indirectly. The provisions of article 31 will apply. So they are asking if you are getting a loan from the related party to pay dividend or to profit distribution to a related party or redemption repurchase reduction of share capital to a related party capital contribution to a related party acquisition of ownership interest in a person who is or will become a related party after this acquisition so in this situation they said deduction of the interest will not be allowed if you are getting a loan just this is a party a this is b this is a c a and B are A B all are related parties. This B B is getting a loan from A, then B is get, giving a loan to C. So whenever the B is getting a loan from A and B is giving a dividend to C, this dividend income is not subject to tax. Profit distribution is not subject to tax. Redemption, repurchase, reduction, these are not, because it's not income, it will not be subject to tax. Capital contribution, not subject to corporate tax. Acquisition, not subject to corporate tax. In the frequently asked question, they are using the word exempt income. If the loan is being taken from the related party to finance the exempt income, then this loan, interest on this loan will not be allowable. There is this exception of this clause as well. In the clause two of the article, they said, if this loan has been taken from the related party, not to take a corporate tax advantage, then this loan will be, the interest on this loan will be allowed. We need to be very clear that if we are taking a loan from the related party for these four options that you mentioned, then in this interest will not be allowed. Then they said, you can claim the loan, you can, you, sorry, you can claim the interest on the loan, it will be subject to general principle. If this loan has been taken, not to take a corporate tax advantage. In the next clause, clause three of the article 31, they said that, it will be assumed that if the lender, if the lender is subject to corporate tax at least 9%, then it will be assumed that the, that the party and the group overall is not taking any advantage for this loan. I just wanted to give you an example, coming back to the same example, here is a party A, here is a B, here is a C. If party B is taking a loan from A, and this loan is subject to 9%, 9% will be booked expense here, 9% will be booked income here, sorry, nine, sorry, interest will be booked as an expense here, they will be allowed 9% saving on interest, this interest will be subject to 9% in the books of Part A. So at the end, FTA or government or uh, uh, respective tax authority, they will not be losing any, any tax. The reason is in one in the books of one person it will be it will be it will be tax allowable in the books of other person it will be subject to tax so at the end it will be assumed that the government not losing anything so this will not be considered considered that it is a tax evasion that it has been structured like this just to evade the tax so, so this is the reason they said if you are taking a loan from the related party for any exempt it will not be allowed then it will be allowed if there is no if there is no tax evasion, it will be assumed there is no tax evasion if the lender is subject to tax at 9%. So these are the special principles. We have discussed the general principle. We have discussed the special principles for the interest capping rules. And then as, as article, I summarize this provisions of the article, the loan required from a related party to finance income that is exempt from CT exempt from corporate like dividend profit distribution redemption repurchase reduction return share capital capital contribution or acquisition of ownership interest in legal entity 
who is or becomes a related party after acquisition, then the interest on the such loan from the related party will not be deductible unless the taxpayer can demonstrate that the primary purpose of obtaining the loan and carrying out the transaction is not to gain a corporate tax advantage. But then they said, no corporate tax advantage shall be deemed to arise if the related party lender is liable to pay 9% or higher tax on the interest income earned. If the interest income in the hands of the lender is not subject to at least 9%, then any interest paid to the related party will only be considered that there is a commercial reason for this. So I'm just summarizing basically general rules. First of all, then we'll summarize the specific rules. These are the general rules, interest capping rules. The first of all, taxable person is exempt or not. This is the first question we need to ask for the general rules. If these, these taxable persons are exempt, we have already discussed banks, insurance company, business, industrial person who is conducting the business or any other person specified by the minister. These are the exempt persons. So interest capping rules will not be applicable to these persons. If the person is not exempt person means not if the person if the taxable person is not out of the four taxable person, then when the taxable person needs to calculate the net interest, the need net interest below the threshold specified by the minister, they will claim 100%. If the net interest is above the threshold specified by the minister, then 30% of adjusted EBITDA except exempt income is allowed, remaining will be carried forward for, for the period of 10 years. So how to calculate the interest? I have set the example here, interest expense, current year net interest expense, carry forward net interest expense. Hopefully we are very clear regarding the general rule. This is a special rule as per the article 31. The below, this one is article 30 of the law. And this one is article 31 of the law. As per article 31 of the law, interest on loan borrowed from the related party, inadmissible, admissible. They said, is it inadmissible? We just discussed for profit distribution of paying for dividend, share capital redemption, repurchase, capital contribution to related party, acquisition from existing or potential related party, it will be inadmissible. But it will be admissible if the main purpose is not to gain the tax advantage. And there will be no tax advantage if the related party lender is subject to tax at least 9%. So these are the special principles. We discuss Article 30, Article 31 of the law. Article 30 deals with the generic principles of the law. 31 deals with the special principles of the law, special rules to claim the interest. These are frequently asked question, why will interest expenditure be fully deductible? Will my interest, yes, it, it, it will be below the threshold specified by the minister, then I can claim 100%. And second option is if I need to apply 30% EBITDA, and if my interest in expense is below 30% EBITDA, then I will be able to claim 100%. Otherwise, I will not be claim 100% interest. It will be subject to interest capping rules. So general principle they would discuss, that we discuss special principle they would describe businesses with net interest expenditure above threshold to be set by the minister will be allowed to deduct net interest expenditure up to 30% of the earning before interest tax depreciation, amortization, excluding any exempt income. We have already discussed this. Any net interest expenditure which exceeds this limit may be carried forward and utilized in the subsequent 10 tax period. Businesses with the net interest expenditure below the threshold to be set by the minister will not be subject to any general interest deduction rules. The general interest deduction limitation rule will not apply to banks, financial institutions, insurance brokers, and individual who is carrying the business or any other person specified by the minister. Specific interest deduction rules where the loan is obtained from a related party and is used to finance income that is exempt from corporate tax. We have discussed what type of income are exempt from corporate tax, like paying a dividend, profit distribution, repurchase, reduction of share capital, acquisition of share capital. The interest of related party loan will not be deductible unless the taxpayer can demonstrate that the main purpose of obtaining the loan and carrying out the transaction is not to gain a corporate tax advantage. Thank you very much. This is over from my side. If you have any question, you can contact me. My name is Maharabzal. You can contact our tax director, Faiza Hashmi. You can speak to our managers. We are always happy to serve you. Moreover, we are always ready to listen, ready to understand, ready to deliver. If you have any question, 
please come back to us. Thank you very much and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So coming back to your questions. So what would be the justification for excluding a natural person undertaking business from the interest capping rules? So just with my what would the justification for excluding a natural person undertaking business from the interest capping rules? So if the natural person is undertaking the business and uh, uh, how the natural person can structure because the natural person is conducting the business. This is the, this is you can say the individual is conducting the business. They cannot do any sort of, any type of planning to reduce the corporate tax. They cannot uh, any sort of planning like the different groups can do to reduce the taxable profit. This is the only reason why I can believe that they have, they have excluded the natural person as well from the interest capital rules. A loan taken for, for dissolution distribution of dividend for instance it does not automatically result in gaining any tax advantage if this is established which is not going to be difficult in such interest and loan taken from dividend yes it has been very clearly written on the special rules they said if you are taking a loan from the related party and this loan is been taken not to take any corporate tax advantage then it will be assumed that this is not subject to then you can claim the interest in their books. This can be, you, you mentioned it can be very easily established. This is for sure if the company is making losses, how the company can pay the dividend. This is not justifiable. Companies always paying the paying the, paying the interest after the after tax profits. And the, if the company has the profit, the company will be paying the dividend. If the company has the profit, company is taking the loan, then useless to take the loan. Company will have the profit, company will have the cash, and all that company will be paying the dividend out of the after tax profits. If you're making losses, taking loan, giving dividend, nobody will accept it. The specific rule apply only when there is the exempt income. The specific rules apply only when there is exempt income. And in that case, does the capital no? I said basically. In the general, while calculating the applying the general rule, exempt income will not be considered. While applying the special rules, they said if the loan has been taken to, to finance the exempt income, then this loan will be not allowed unless and until there is a commercial reason and, and you are not taking the loan to take any corporate tax advantage. One more question. Uh, you use the word interest expense only. What about other? expenses associated in securing the loan. I have already discussed interest itself covers the interest itself cover the, they said basically two things. One is expenses incurred to raise the finance. Second, they said expenses incurred to use the money. So whatever the expenses incurred to raise the finance and expenses incurred to use the money, all it will fall under the definition of interest. So like usually we are asking that if one party is getting the loan, they are considering the processing fee. They said processing fee in the language of the law, this is interest as well, because this is the amount that we're incurring to raise the finances. So raise the finances, expenses incurred to raise the finances, expenses incurred to use the money, both will be considered interest expense. What about other expenses associated in securing the loan? Usually, bank charge, one-time disbursement. It will be it will be it will be part of the interest we have already discussed. Will the other expenses be deductible or just interest expense purely? No, I I think I I you want to Hasib, I have you want a very clear answer on this. Two types of category can be of interest expense. Expenses incurred to raise the finance. Expenses incurred to use the money. Both will be considered as an interest expense. Any other question? You are most welcome. Okay, no more questions. Okay, guys, thank you very much and uh, have a lovely day. Thank you very much once again being with us. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for watching the video. Click on the bell and subscribe to the YouTube channel.